Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, good morning, and welcome to Strength for the Day as we get to wrap up another week. And um, this recording going out on March 22nd, this episode. And uh, of course, we are going through the book of Judges. We just have uh, just really one, let's see, ne- yeah, next week is our last week in the book of Judges. And uh, man, I'm looking forward to uh, next week's study coming to one of my favorite characters. I think probably every young boy who grew up in church, uh, his favorite character was Samson growing up, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, for a couple of days next week. His life is over uh, four chapters. We'll break it up into two days. Won't get a deep study, but I know it'll be a be a help to us. So today we're coming to Judges chapter number 12. Uh, Recently we were with Jephthah as he uh, surrendered his daughter back to the Lord because of the victory that God had given him. And we're continuing in his life. Remember, God had used Jephthah, even though the people of Gilead had pushed him away, God had used Jephthah to deliver the children of Israel from the onslaught of the Ammonites. And so today we're coming to uh, chapter number 12. And uh, what I want us to see today is what can be avoided when a situation is approached with humility and forgiveness rather than when a situation is approached with pride and um, and this bitterness and disdain for someone else. And so we're going to look today at kind of that thought, and I'll give the application at the end and something to take away. But let's go to Judges chapter number 12, and uh, we're going to read the whole chapter. It's just uh, 15 verses, so we'll read through that, and then we'll get a few thoughts today and be on our way. Judges chapter number 12, Then the men of Ephraim gathered together. They crossed over Zaphon and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the people of Ammon and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house down on you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, My people and I were in a great struggle with the people of Ammon. And when I called you, you did not deliver me out of their hands. So when I saw that you would not deliver me, remember a couple days ago, we looked where he went and asked the people of Ephraim for help. They said no. He said, so when I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my hands and crossed over against the people of Ammon and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? And now Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim. And the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim because they said, you Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. And The Gileadites seized the fords of the Jordan before the Ephraimites arrived. And when any Ephraimite who escaped said, let me cross over, the men of Gilead would say to him, are you an Ephraimite? And if he said no, then they would say to him, then say Shibboleth. And he would say Sibboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they would take him and kill him at the fords of the Jordan. There fell at that time 42,000 Ephraimites. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried uh, in among the cities of Gilead. And after him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons and gave away 30 daughters in marriages and uh, brought in 30 daughters from elsewhere. For his sons, he judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzan died, was buried in Bethlehem. After him, Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel. He judged Israel 10 years, and Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried in Aijalon uh, in the country of Zebulun. After him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons and rode on 70 young donkeys. He judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite, died and was buried in Pirithon in the land of Ephraim in the mountains of the Amalekites. So those last five verses just giving us um, one, two, three, four other uh, judges that followed Jephthah. But the story I want us to see is Jephthah and these Ephraimites. If you caught it, they, the Ephraimites come over and they come to Jephthah and they come to him with this, this question 
Like, why did you go up and defeat the Ammonites without us? And what we need to know is they did not come over and ask that because they really wanted to help. No, they were, the, the Ephraimites were only in it kind of for themselves. They wanted the glory. Hey, how dare you get a great victory and not call us so that we could claim this victory as well? Um, they had a similar approach with Gideon in Judges chapter number eight after Gideon won um, over the, uh, um, the, starts with an M, my, my brain just went blank, Moabites. Uh, no, was it the Moabites? Who did Gideon fight against? Well, that doesn't matter. You can find that and put it in the comments. But anyway, after Gideon won his great victory, uh, here's what the, the Ephraimites did. They went to him in Judges chapter 8 and verse number 1. Like, hey, why didn't you take us? Why didn't you let us go? So they're, they're not coming to Jephthah with this mindset of like, we really want to be involved. No, they're coming with this spirit of arrogance. They're coming with this spirit of pride, like we want to be seen. We wanted to have victory too. And they they come and they come not only with the spirit of arrogance and pride, but they come with a, with a spirit of aggression, right? They say to him, because we're so upset at you, we're going to burn your house down. This bitterness has gone deep within us and we're going to have retaliation. We're going to get even with you. If you read there, it says that you Gileadites, verse number four, you guys are fugitives among us. Man, you are like wanted criminals. So they come with this pride. They come with the spirit of retaliation. They come with uh, great anger. I mean, you can go to uh, verses, verse four down through verse number six. Ephraim is angry. And then Jephthah and the Gileadites get angry, right? And so now uh, the anger is reversed from the Ephraimites to the Gileadites kind of getting back at them. And you read the story. They have a certain passageway that crosses over and they would stop people and say, uh, what tribe are you from? And if they, you know, are you from Ephraim? They say, no. They say, all right, say Shibboleth. And they would say Sibboleth and then they'd kill him because they couldn't pronounce that H right. It's just like um, it's an accent type thing that they were looking for. Well, why, did, why were the Gileadites doing that? Well, because Ephraim attacked them verbally, were abusive against them. And so now, Gilead, we're going to get even with you. And did you see the result of what took place? We read in Judges 12 and verse number uh, 6 that 42,000 Ephraimites are killed. 42,000 Ephraimites. And I, be I believe, personally, there were probably some Gileadites that died as well. Now, and now, here's what I just find interesting. Everything could have been solved had someone chosen forgiveness and humility. The Ephraimites were saying, how dare you? We wanted the glory. The Gileadites were saying, you don't want anything to do with us. You guys are just in it for yourselves. And the Ephraimites said, we're going to burn your house down. We're so bitter. The Gileadites said, oh, yeah, we're going to kill you one by one because we're going to get even. And this spirit of vengeance. I just want to say that this whole story, it did not have to go this way. It, it is a story of pride and jealousy and bitterness and vengeance and anger and aggression. It's a story of, I think, something that truly could have been avoided. As I think about this story today and you and me in our lives, the question I have is what, what situations in our life could be avoided if we would simply approach it with humility and forgiveness? I tell you, having pastored now for uh, over 13 years in the same community, in the same church, um, it surprises me how many people are out there that carry uh, a spirit of bitterness for decades. I, I've shared the story before, but years ago, and this, this gentleman has passed off the scene. No one watching the recording would even know him. There was a man in our community that I was getting to know a little bit, and he had me over to his house. And I remember I was walking uh, in his hallway, and I said, oh, are these pictures of your kids? And he said, oh, yeah, those are my children. And I said, oh, no, where are they at? And I, I was heartbroken by his response. He said, oh, well, well, you know, Dennis, I, uh, I actually haven't talked to, to that child in 10 years and I, I said, excuse me, you haven't talked to him in 10 years? 
He said, oh yeah, we had bad blood because, you know, 10 years ago, and he begins to tell me this story and my heart was broken. Now, now listen, there's, there's cases where uh, you can forgive someone and not allow them into your sphere of influence again. I think of cases of abuse or um, different things like that. I mean, physical or, or emotional or sexual abuse that takes place or people who are just habitual liars and taking advantage of. Those types of things you can forgive and not allow someone a sphere of influence. But let's be honest, most of us, most of us carry so much pride that we let the smallest of things cause us to be bitter. You know, that person took my seat. That guy cut me off in traffic. That coworker, one time they sent out an email that just made me look, made me look bad. And, and we allow that bitterness to cause us to see outcomes that could have been avoided had we chosen humility and forgiveness. And I sat there in that hallway and I thought, how sad for someone who claims to be a Christian to be carrying so much bitterness. When I look at Judges chapter number 12 and what took place between Ephraim and Gilead, I think, wow, what could have been avoided? And may God help us today. May God help us to choose forgiveness. Maybe today you can think of someone that you've been carrying bitterness against. Listen, forgiveness is a daily choice. It doesn't just happen overnight. It is something I choose today. And every time the, the devil sends a thought my way of bitterness toward that person, I say, no, 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 I choose forgiveness. I release them of my right to get even with them for hurting me. And may God help us be forgivers. Why could we do that? Well, because the Word of God says this in the book of Ephesians, that we can forgive because we've been forgiven. And so today, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've been forgiven. So let's avoid these outcomes that we will not want and do not want by choosing humility and forgiveness. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we jump into Judges chapter number 13. We'll see you then.